Okay, Edgar, I'm going to compare your swing to Grant White, who was a tour player during the 90s, and at that time considered having one of the best swings in golf. He's now one of the top instructors for tour players. I like to start at the impact position because it's the most important. Everything the golf ball does, how far it goes, how high it goes, how much it spins and curves, is all due to the laws of physics and motion that exist at the moment of impact. What determines those laws of physics is the club's position at impact. And what determines the club's position is the player's body position at impact. And everything the player does prior to impact has the sole purpose of arriving at a fundamentally sound impact position. The primary goal of impact is to be able to transfer the maximum amount of club speed to the golf ball so that the ball leaves the club face with the maximum amount of ball speed. The pros achieve this in two main ways. First, they make sure that the low point of their golf swing is in front of the golf ball. And they accomplish this by making sure that their weight is strongly on their left side. The average pro will have 85% of their weight on their left foot at the moment of impact. When you look at the red line coming up from Grant's left ankle, it's passing right through his belt buckle. So he clearly has a huge majority of his weight on his left side at the moment of impact. This is what helps him place the low point of his swing in front of the golf ball. Now you have a little bit more weight on your left side than your right, but you need a little bit more in order to have a better position so you can place that low point even further forward to have a better strike on the golf ball. You always want to hit the ball first before you hit the ground. The second thing the pros do is they make sure that their hands are in front of the golf ball uh, before they hit the golf ball. I've drawn a blue arrow straight down from, his, from Grant's hands and you can see how they are in front of the ball. The red line is the shaft and you can see how much shaft lean there is in Grant's uh, impact position. Uh, this gives Grant the ability to hit down into the golf ball. You have a little bit of shaft lean but not a great amount. And so you're, you're going to be approaching the golf ball a little bit more shallow. And uh, with this geometric position, you're going to hit uh, behind the ball frequently. You're going to have fat shots, but also thin shots. Now let's look at some of the other positions prior to impact that influence your impact position. Here we are in the one position at the setup. First, I'm going to look at the, the stance. Uh, I like the width of your stance. I would like to see you flare your toes out a little bit more, particularly that left foot. You can see how Grant has turned that foot out a little bit. Um, this will assist you in transferring your weight to that left side. I like your, your arm and hand position at the start. Uh, you, you're creating a little bit of shaffling even before you begin. So you're you're almost in a little mini impact position with your hands and arms, just like Grant is. Your weight distribution is um, a little bit uh, set back too much in your right leg. You can see how Grant uh, has a little bit more weight on his left side at the setup. He's, he has about 55% of his weight on his left side. And uh, you have your upper body leaning back just a little too much. I'm now going to take Grant's swing back to the three position in his backswing and, and just kind of we're just going to kind of watch this move right here. And notice that as he swings back, the three position is when the left arm is parallel to the ground. But as he moves back, he maintains his weight on that left side. His head doesn't uh, drift to the right. He doesn't lean to the right. Uh, he keeps everything anchored around that left side. This, this is a stable axis golf swing where the, the golf swing rotates around the left side. You want to keep the low point in front of the ball throughout the golf swing. There's no value in starting the low point in front of a golf ball and then moving it to the behind the ball and then have to try to bring it back up again on the downswing. Now let's uh, look at your backswing. As you go back, you keep a fairly steady uh, 
rotation here, you don't, you're not really leaning or falling to the right very much. Um, so I like that. When you get to the three position, you've maintained a really good extension in your left arm and you have a nice shaft angle. You have, have a little bit more than a right angle in your shaft and, and left arm right there. I like the fact that your left knee is flexing and your back leg is extending. That helps you stay on that left side. You're not uh, leaning into that, impressing that ground as much as Grant is. You can see how Grant's left shoulder is is down and, and uh, moving down into almost like he's pushing the ground. Like he had a, if he had a soda can under his left foot, he's almost he's almost crushing crushing that that can right there as he kind of falls into it and uh, you're you don't have a a strong move to the left during the backswing now as we come down into the golf ball you have a little bit of a fall right there to the left side which is good but I would like to just uh, enhance all of that that you're doing. You're kind of doing a mini version of the complete move, and I'd just like to enhance it a little bit more, be a little bit more aggressive with that move right there, and get your lower body a little bit more active as you come down into the golf ball. So I need you to just drive your lower body further to the target, and that'll help you hit out more, but it also helps get the club in a better position so your low point is in front of that golf ball. I'm now going to uh, go through impact to the ninth position. Do Grant first. The ninth position is when the right arm gets parallel to the uh, ground. Uh, and you can see in Grant, uh, he's got a nice straight arm here. He's got a straight, his left arm is straight. Also, it's important to note that Grant's left hand is underneath the right hand as his wrists are crossed there. So he's properly uh, releasing the, the hands through the ball. Uh, so he's not cupping the back of his hand, as particularly he's not cupping the back of his left wrist. Um, his uh, wrist are, will hinge upward, but not back and forth. He's not rolling his arms. He's simply turning his arms with the shoulders and with the core of his swing. Um, and he'll be in a position to hinge, hinge it back up again. In fact, his, his shaft is about right here, so he's already beginning to re-hinge that club. If we look at your setup here, or your, your swing through impact as you come through, you'll see how that left arm starts to separate his elbows your elbows are starting to separate and get further away from each other. Your left arm is, is kind of bending in what we call chicken winging. Uh, your left hand is above the right hand, so you haven't properly um, positioned your, your, your arms so that you, your wrist uh, will hinge upward as opposed to you're kind of cupping the back of that left hand right there. So you're actually moving your wrist in the wrong direction uh, through impact and uh, so learning how to correctly move your hands through impact and through the swing will uh, help you be a lot more consistent but more importantly you'll be have a lot more power because the, the proper use of the hands through impact is one of the major power sources uh, but you're not executing that correctly and therefore you're not taking full advantage of what your hands can produce when they move properly. You have a very solid foundation of fundamentals to build on, uh, but the next few pieces of the swing that, that I would like you to work on is um, in your back swing, going from one to three, uh, I would like for you to uh, just get a little bit more uh, on the left side and then uh, work a little bit more on, on the correct action in your hands through impact.